Hi, I'm Bo Carnes with Free Code Camp. In this course, I will teach you how to create a full e-commerce store with WooCommerce and WordPress. These are free tools that you can use to create a wide variety of e-commerce websites, and I will teach you everything you need to know step by step. This course is perfect for beginners. There is no coding whatsoever, and you'll be able to do everything with a simple graphical interface. The WooCommerce plugin makes it simple to turn a WordPress website into a complete e-commerce business. In this course, you will learn how to customize your store, create products, accept payments with credit cards and PayPal, set taxes and shipping rates, create coupon codes, and more. First, I'm going to show you how to do the initial setup. This includes getting a domain name, hosting, and installing WordPress and WooCommerce. Next, I'll show you how to install an e-commerce store template and easily customize the look of it so it fits with your specific brand. After the store looks exactly how you like, I'll show you how to add four different types of store products. Finally, I'll show you how to set up the payment processing, automatic tax calculations, shipping rates, and coupon codes so customers can check out on your website. Along the way, you will also learn other tips such as customizing the emails sent to customers, adding related products, creating store categories, and more. This course is all you need to set up a store, but if you want to learn more about customizing the look of your WordPress website, you can check out my previous WordPress course. So, let's get started. First, I'm going to show you how to get your domain and your hosting. This is the part that you will have to pay some money, but it is pretty cheap. The name usually costs between $10 and $20 per year, and hosting often costs around $5 per month. We're going to use Hostinger. There's a lot of websites that provide website hosting. Hostinger has provided a grant that has made this course possible. And that's why we're gonna show you how to set things up with Hostinger. Now, even before I've made this course or we got this grant with Free Code Camp, I actually used Hostinger for some of my personal sites and I had a really good experience with them. Some things about Hostinger is if you get the right type of subscription, you can get a free domain, lifetime SSL, and DDoS protection. But just so you know, everything I teach in this course will work with other hosting providers as well. So you don't have to go with Hostinger. So let's just click start down, start now, and there's a few different options here. Uh, if you're just starting out, I would recommend just the cheapest option. You can always upgrade later if you need to, but see this includes one website, and then the next one up includes 100 websites, but we're just making one website. So just select that one. And then you choose just how long you want to sign up for. Um, you're probably going to want at least 12 months, but you may want the 24 months or the 48 months to get a different deal. And then you can just enter all your information. Now, I'm not going to go through all this right now because I already have an account, but I just want to show you what you have to do. So I'll let me just sign into my account, and then I can show you what's going to, what's going to look like after you get signed in. Okay, once you get signed in, you can get your domain. You may have already gotten your domain in the process of signing up for your hosting provider, but if not, you may have to get your domain afterwards. And just so you know, it is possible to buy your domain from one company and get your hosting from a different company and connect them. But for this tutorial, we're just showing how you would get your domain name from the same company as the hosting. So I'll just click Claim Domain. And the, here is where you, you may have to search through quite a few domains to find one that's not already taken. But let me just try some. How about robot clothing? No. Robot attire. Okay, we got one that worked. Robot attire, because this is going to be a clothing store. Okay, I'm going to claim the domain. Let's see, I'll get this set up. And this is just on my own, personal. And I'll just finish registration. Okay, now I can start creating the website. And it's pinning verification, so I just need to go and click the link in my email. And make sure you turn on this who is privacy, or everyone, anybody can look up your, your information. And you could be getting a lot of email, spam emails, even like letters to your address. Let me show you how to create a custom email from your domain. So I'm on the Hostinger domain overview. If I scroll down here, I can go to manage email. Here, I am going to create a new email account. So I'm going to do add email account, and it's just going to be info at robotattire.com. And then I'll create a password. 
and then create. And if I click on webmail, it'll open up to where I can log in. And here, once I get logged in, I can send and receive email from info at robotattire.com. Okay, let me go back to the home here, and I'm going to set up the premium shared hosting. This is where we'll install WordPress. You can just go through the survey. And here is where you can choose to just install WordPress or install WordPress plus WooCommerce. And that's what we want to do. We want to install WooCommerce and WordPress because WooCommerce is going to power the store that runs on WordPress. And then just create an account here. And you can just pick a template right here. I'm actually going to install the template later just so you can see how you would do if you don't have Hostinger. If you're not using Hostinger, if you're using a different hosting provider, you may not get a chance to pick a template right here and you may have to do it later. So that's what we're going to do. And we'll just connect it right to robotattire.com. Okay, I'll finish the setup. And again, you can install WordPress even if you don't have Hostinger. Most of the popular hosting providers have a way to install WordPress. It just can be slightly different depending on what hosting provider you get. After the website is set up, you may go right into the place where you're managing it, but if not, you can always go back to the home page here in Hostinger and then click Manage. Now on this page, it's going to give you all the information about your page, like the IP address, and uh, it's like the domain name, and the name servers, and also, if you're using a hosting provider that's not Hostinger, there's probably a page that looks kind of like this, which is where you actually install WordPress. So you would probably get into some sort of managing site just like this, and there will likely be a button somewhere down here that says install WordPress or says WordPress. WordPress or something like that. So if you can't, if you don't install WordPress when you're originally setting up your page, there may be some other way to do it. But once you have installed WordPress, then it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to click on Dashboard right here. And then once I get to Dashboard, I'm just going to click Edit Website. We purchased the domain name and hosting and installed WordPress and WooCommerce. Now let's customize the store. Now let me minimize the page a little bit so you can actually see the URL bar here. Now whenever you create any sort of WordPress website, to get to the admin page where you actually make all the edits on your WordPress site, it's always the same. It's going to be the URL that you previously chose and it's going to be slash wp-admin. And then when you get to that, you'll log in. Now I'm already logged in, but if you're not logged in, you'll be able to log into the admin page and then you can start making changes on your WordPress account. As soon as we get into here, there'll be some special notifications. It talks about setting up the website analytics, and it says, Welcome to WordPress. Well, we can just dismiss that. Some of these you can just dismiss. Now, this one, your store does not appear to be using a secure connection. This is important, especially when you're going to create a store. You want it to be over a secure connection. It says, We highly recommend serving your entire website over an HTTPS connection. Now, let me show you how to do that. So, I'm going to go back to the hosting or admin page and look where it says force HTTPS redirect all websites over HTTPS so I'm going to turn that on and then it's going to allow us to install the SSL certificate now pretty much all hosting providers are going to give you this option somewhere but it could be in a different place so I'm going to say install SSL now it says HTTPS will be automatically forced on your domain. So instead of HTTP colon slash slash, it's HTTPS colon slash slash robotattire.com. And the S means secure. So we'll close that. And now I'll just go back over here. If I just refresh this, it's going to have me log in again because now we're in the secure version of the website. Now you can see this lock is here because we're in the secure version of the website. And if we click this, you'll see connection is secure. So we're in HTTPS, which is good. And we don't see that warning anymore over here. Okay, before we start setting things up, 
let's see what the website actually looks like with, with all the default settings here. So I'm just going to click where it says, I'm going to mouse over where it says robotattire.com and click visit site. Okay, so this is the default site. I'm going to go back to the admin page and then uh, this time I'm going to try going to visit store. Okay, so this is the default store. Now obviously the site and the store don't look anything like what we want to look like. We're going to be doing a lot of updating. So I'm going to show you how to edit this site so it looks exactly how we want it to look. And now you can see this top bar here, that's because we're logged into WordPress. And just anybody that goes to your website isn't going to see this top bar, but since we're logged into WordPress, we see that top bar because we're the administrator, so we can do special things like edit the site, customize. I'm going to show you what all these things are later. But if we go back into the URL, we can see this is the shop URL, but we can go back to the main URL just by changing the URL in here. So I'm going to show you how to update all of this to be exactly what we want, to, to look exactly how we want to look. But first, let's go back into the dashboard. Before we saw what the website already looks like, and it didn't look that nice. So we are going to install a theme and a template to just get a basic look for our site, and then we can customize it. Now, a lot of these things that I'm going to show you, the order doesn't really matter. Like, we could set up, we could do the WooCommerce setup now, but we're going to do that in a little bit. We are going to, right now, go to Appearance, and let me just zoom in a little more so it's easier to see everything. Anytime you're using WordPress, you're going to use some sort of theme. Now, it has this 2022 as the default theme here, but there's tons of different themes that you can use. I'm just going to close that for now, and then I'm going to go to Add New Theme. So there's a bunch of really good themes, like Astra. I think this is one of the most popular themes out there. Uh, we have Ocean WP. I showed how to use this in my previous WordPress tutorial. For this one, we're going to use one called Bloxy. Now, a lot of the themes work well with e-commerce sites, but this one in particular I found has a lot of good features for e-commerce sites. So I'm just going to go and inst install that theme. And then after it's installed, I just click Activate. And then I'm going to install the Bloxy Companion. It says right here that it, inv it includes custom extensions, demo templates, and many awesome in many other awesome features. And we're going to be using one of the, the demo templates. So let's install the Bloxy Companion. Okay, now if you want it to, if you want to give them all this extra information, you can, but I'm just going to skip there. But if you want to allow and continue, you can. And now I'm going to go to Starter Sites. So what's cool is it has all these starter sites that you can install for free. So we can install one of these starter sites and then we can go through and edit it as much as we want. So we can use one of these sites as our base site and then we can then customize it to, make, use our, to meet our exact needs. So you're going to want to go through all of these and try to figure out which one looks most similar to what you want your website to be. Well, I'm going to just choose this uh, garter robe. I kind of like that it already focuses on clothing, and my site is going to focus on clothing, but you can use any of these, and you can make, like, for, for example, see this one's called Petsy. You can use Petsy even if you're not going to be having a website focused on Petsy, or focus on pets, because once we get this installed, we can do a bunch of edits and, and make it custom for our specific use case. So I'm gonna import this one. And then we'll install the child theme also. And then you, we can choose which page builder we want to use. There's the Gutenberg page builder and the Elementor page builder. Now Gutenberg is the default page builder that comes with WordPress. And Elementor is, is, an, is an extra page where like an add-on, a special page builder. And most people agree that Elementor is a little easier to use. So if you're a beginner, I would recommend using Elementor. And I'm going to show you how to use it later in this course. So I'll just click Next here. And it's going to install Elementor. WooCommerce is already installed. And then it's going to install WP Form. So let's click Next. We'll just import all the content and install everything. Okay, starter site imported successfully. So let's view the site. Okay, so remember what our site looked like before. Well, now this is what it looks like. So the starter site included some images and then it has all these things. It even has some sample products right in here. 
and I'm going to show you in a little bit how to update all these, how to change all these things to, to your products and your images. But it's nice just to have something to start with that we can customize for our purposes. And you can see all the text is just lorem ipsum, so it's just sample text that we'll, we'll update with our own products. So one thing, let's go up here, and I'm just going to click on a product so you can see what it looks like. If we click on here, we can see the product page. And you can see this is on sale, normally $30, now it's $45. And it even has a review. So users are going to be able to enter their own reviews for your for your store when they buy products and then it shows the top rated products and then we can even see what happens if we add this to cart so let's just add this to the cart I'll view the cart and then we even have a checkout cart here and you can have coupon codes um, then we can proceed to checkout and even take in the billing details. And it says right here, sorry, it seems that there are no available payment methods for your state. Uh, we're going to have to set up the payment methods, which I'll show you how to do. And I can't even show you what it's like to place order until we get the, the payment methods. Right now we have invalid payment methods because we don't even we haven't even set up any payment methods. But let's see what else we have. We have the products. And you can see on the main product page, we actually have a filter. You can filter by price, and uh, we can see the different products. We have services, which will be custom, will be specific to your store, and you may not even need this page. Depending on what store you're trying to create, you may want to show what special services your store offers. And then there's the About Us page. There's a news page, which is basically a blog. And so we can see all these sample blog entries here, and then a contact page. And you can see how it's always giving products, trying to sell things on every page. And then we can even search for things. So I'm going to search for a hat. Okay, that came up with nothing. Let's try a watch. I saw that there's definitely a watch in the sample products here. And it even comes up right here. Okay, so people can search for the products they want. So this is a pretty nice store here. So now let's see how to customize it so it's specific to your store, your product, and what you want it to look like. So let's go back to the dashboard. Soon I'm going to show you how to customize your store and add custom products, but first let's finish this WooCommerce setup. So I'm going to click Start Selling, and it's going to guide us through some setup things. First, we're going to, going to put in our address. If you look right here, it says this is going to help configure currency options and shipping rules automatically, and this will not be publicly visible and can be easily changed later. So you don't have to enter, enter this. You can set up the shipping rules and currency uh, manually, but I'm just going to enter some information here. And then you can choose what are you going to sell, physical products, downloadable products, or subscriptions. I'm just going to do physical products and downloads. And then continue. And then you choose like about how many products you're going to have. And then they they try to kind of upsell you. It's not it's it's actually free plugins, but they try to suggest what other things you want to add. For now, we're not going to add any of those, and uh, we can always add things later. And then it's going to ask you if you want to choose a theme, but we already did that, so let's continue with the active theme. And we're going to come back to all this in a little bit, the setting up payments, taxes, shipping. We're, after we customize our store, we're going to come back and set up all these things. Now let's go back to, uh, the on the side we have the WooCommerce, and we're going to go to Settings. And you're probably going to want to update some of the settings in here. Uh, so selling locations, where do you want to sell to? Uh, this may change depending on what, where you want to ship to. Like you can actually type in different specific countries, sell the specific countries, and then you can just type in type in the countries here. Like, let's say I'm going to uh, sell to the United States, either Canada, 
and Mexico. That way I don't have to ship across an ocean. Or you can just choose all countries or whatever countries you want to sell to and then shipping locations. So sell to specific countries, that means we're selling to people that are that live in specific countries, but you may not want to ship to the same locations that you're selling to. It's usually going to be the same. That's why the default is ship to all countries you sell to. And the default customer location. Uh, where do you think most people are going to B. Now you could do geolocate. If you click geolocate, the browser will try to figure out where the, the user is located and then it will set the default location to wherever the browser says they're currently located. So I'm actually just going to do shop country region. So it'll, it will default to the United States where I'm from. And then I am going to enable tax rate and calculations that we'll set up more later. Enable the use of coupon codes. You can decide whether you want to do that. And then you can choose the currency options. So I'll just save changes for this. Now I'll go to the products page. Some of the things you're going to want to choose here are the weight units. Well, since I'm in the United States, I'll choose pounds, but probably most people are going to choose kilograms if you're somewhere else in the world. Dimension units, I'll just choose inches. And you can choose if you want to enable reviews, if you want to enable star rating. I'll just save what we have here. And then you're probably going to want to go to inventory here too. And so in inventory, you can determine whether you're going to enable stock management. So I can just turn that off and it, will, it won't ever tell how much you have in stock. Or you can set all these things based on when something is low stock, when something is out of stock. You can also change things for the downloadable products. And for the down Loadable products, you can determine whether you have to re download. You can do downloads require login. Um, are you going to grant access to downloadable products after payment? Uh, you're likely going to want to say keep all of this as the default settings, but you can change it if you want. Now tax, we're going to talk more about tax later, but you can see there's settings for tax, um, shipping. We're going to set payments for the store later. And then accounts and privacy. Do you want to allow customers to place order without an account? Probably. You want to give customers as much freedom and flexibility as possible so they'll be more likely to go through and buy products. Um, allow, I'm going to allow customers to create an account. Allow customers to create an account on the My Account page. We want them to be able to just do as much as they possibly can. Yeah, we, they, we want them to be able to log into an existing account during checkout if they have an account. And then here, it's going to link to the privacy policy, which we are going to be able to create later. And then let's go to emails. Whoops, uh, I got to have to remember to save this. So here are where you can see the emails that are sent out um, when someone makes an order and you can update what emails are sent out based on different things happening in your store. And the rest of this we won't do anything with. So let's go back to our dashboard. Now I'm going to teach you how to customize your site so it's specific to your brand. So I'm going to go back into visit site and I'm going to show you how to customize every part of this site and then afterwards, I'll show you how to add your custom items. While we're customizing the site, we're just going to use all the sample items and sample data that's already there. But then afterwards, we'll delete all the sample data so we can start adding your real products. So if you remember, we installed the Elementor page builder. That's what I'm going to show you how to use now. So in this top bar, we're going to click Edit with Elementor. And if you get this, uh, depending on how you set up your site, you may have to recreate the kit. So we'll do that now. We're going to recreate the kit and then save changes. You may not even have to do that step. But now let me go back to the site and then edit with Elementor. There's always new versions of Elementor. So you may get something telling about some new version of Elementor. But you can just click through that. Got it. So now we can see the site. And then over on the left side are all the different elements we can edit with. But look what we can do. But we can actually click any of these elements and start editing. So it says brand new collection. Well, I can actually just select this. And then I'm going to type in robot clothes are fun. And you can 
put anything you want here, your store slogan. Uh, you know, this is just for fun. I'm just kind of giving you an example here. But you can change what this looks like. I can go to style. So I can actually change the color if I want to change it to a specific color. Or even better, if you don't want to, instead of just picking any color, uh, it's better if your site has specific colors. You don't want to use tons of colors everywhere. You want to stick to just a few colors on your whole site. So that's easy to do by, I can click one of these global colors. I'm going to do um, theme color four, but later I'll show you how to change those theme colors. So when you change the theme colors, then all the places, like for instance, one of the theme colors is red. And if I change the theme color to a different color, all the red will change to a different color. But for now, I'm going to continue doing some edits on here. So here is where you can change uh, the, the font size, uh, weight, and all, all this stuff. You can change the style, like if it's bold or italicized. I'm actually going to change this to normal. And then I'm going to make this a little smaller because I want this to just be on two lines. And you can even change like the line height, how much space is between the lines, letter spacing. And there's just a lot of different settings you can, you can change to make it so it works for your specific brand. You can even add a text shadow. So that's what, I'm going to try adding a shadow here. And we can kind of change where the shadow is going to be. And uh, you don't have to add a shadow, it's just some, some interesting things to make it stand out and make it specific to your, your store. So I'm going to go to advanced here, and this is where you can change different margin. So margin is going to be, so margin and padding are both going to have to do with how much space are around the words. So I'm going to change the, the margin on the side, and you can see it's all going together because it's locked. But if we unlink the values, then we can just change one, or you don't have to change them all at the same time. So I can put this back to zero, this can be zero, and then we can just change the left margin to go to the side. And it's going to work the same with padding. So if I unlink this, I can change the padding on the left side. And then there's all these other things you can do to the text. Like any of this stuff here, you can do to any text on the whole page. So you, we can make an interest animation so it, it fades in. So as soon as you scroll down to see these words, the text can fade in. And there's all these different options. We can make it bounce in. We can make it slide to the left. And uh, you're probably not going to want to do that for your main title, but this is just an example because you can go through in every text, like this new arrivals, you can make it slide in as soon as the person scrolls down. So you can just experiment with all these different settings. You can, like, for instance, you can change the background. So you, we can put an image in the background or we can do a specific color. So I can make it a red background. I'll clear that though. Or you can actually put an image in the background. Like for instance, over here we have a background image and I'll show you how to change that for a little bit. So there's these all these different things to basically customize it to be exactly how you want it. So here you can see these three different things with three different icons. Well, instead of a check mark, I wanna change this icon. I'm gonna go to the icon library and I can change this. I can, let's see, where's the search here? Obviously, I'm going to choose a robot for the icon because this is all about robot clothes. And I can change this, and I can do the same thing for all of these icons. Now I'm going to show you some settings that change stuff on your whole site. So if I click the this hamburger menu, I can go to Site Settings. So here you can change things that's, that are going to impact things all over your site. Now, depending on what your theme is, it may not change things because you may have a theme that overrides some of these settings, but some things are pretty important, like the site identity. Let's go to site identity. I'm going to change this site name will show up in the, in the top bar of your website. So instead of my URL here, I'm going to be called robot attire and then a site description. This is something that could show up on some search engines and then some other places. So instead of putting just another WordPress site, I'm going to say best place best store for robot attire and then logo this is where we can change our logo 
So to switch the logo on the site, we're just going to click here to choose image. Uh, first, you have to have your logo made. I would recommend a site like Fiverr.com where you can hire someone to make a, a logo for you for $5. I've actually used that for some other sites that I've created. But also, sometimes I just create my own logos. In this case, I've already created a logo. So I'm going to just go to choose image, and I'm going to upload it. And I'm going to select it, and it's uploading. And I will I'll just put logo. And then here's where you can also add a favicon. That's the icon that will appear on the tab on your browser. So you can choose an icon. There's plenty of websites that you can go to that you can upload a picture and it will it will give you a favicon file that you can upload right into here. So what I'm going to do is update the site settings and hopefully we'll see it right on here. Now we can see that the logo didn't change. In WordPress, because of how the page builder works together with the theme, works together with just the standard WordPress design, uh, there could be multiple places to change different things. And depending on what theme you're using, the only way to find out for sure how to change things is through trial and error. So we can see that changing the site logo here to not change the logo. There's one other place we can change. And when we go to this, this other place, there's actually quite a few other things we can change there so let me show you how to get to there so what we're going to do is just close this and then I'm going to click the little hamburger menu and then click exit to dashboard and then we just need to go to this the WordPress logo here and now we go to appearance and under appearance I'm going to go to customize this is going to enable a whole new section of of things that we can customize. So I'm going to go to the header because we're changing the header here. And then you can see it's showing different things we have here. Uh, so HT, when it says the top row, that's this row up here. This is the top row where it says don't miss our holiday offer, 20% off. And then it has the, the social media things. And then we have the main row here, which so it says logo, and then it has the menu, it has the search account cart, that's the search account cart over here. So I'm just going to click where it says menu. Now you can see the logo here. This is the old logo. I'm going to click this edit button, and then I can just choose the new logo. Okay, now we see the new logo right up here. And there's different settings you can do. We can change the, the height of the logo. It's a little too big. and uh, you can change how it's aligned. Now, while we're on this page, let me show you what some of the other things you can do. Okay, so let's now change this top bar here. So or one thing I wanna do is change the social media. So if I click social media here, here's where we can add what social media we wanna add. Like we may not wanna, we may not wanna have a phone number, we probably wanna have an email. So I'm just going to have, I'm just gonna have Twitter and Facebook. And then it, you can see they go away here. So now we only have the two links here. And then it says configure the social links and general layout social network accounts. So let me show you how to do that. We're going to go back here, general, and then social network accounts. And there's all these. So you can just add what, what your social network account is here. So for email, I'll just put my email address. And then we can go back to the other one, which is the Twitter and you can add, and I'll just put HTTPS colon slash slash Twitter dot com slash Bo Carnes. But you may have a social media account directly for your, your store. And then here's some other things we can do. I am going to go back here. And this is a, a pretty important thing here. If I go to, where's, oh, I need to go back again. And then I'm going to go to colors. This is where you can change the colors throughout your whole store. Now, I decided to go ahead and use the red. That's why I made the, the logo red there. But if you don't want, see all these buttons that are red? If, if I go into this color palette, or actually not there, if I just actually click this color, color one, I can change this to blue. And see, every place on the site that was red is now blue. See, and then you can change, see that red there? Well, 
Let's go to color two. I think that could be the hover color. Let's find out if I change the green. Let's see what happens. Now if I hover, now it's going to hover as green. And see where this gray here, that kind of looks like this. Let's see if I change this, what happens. If I change this to red. Oh no, but I did change this text down here. We'll keep that. And see, even this becomes blue here. But since I have the red as the logo, I'm gonna change the main color back to red. But you can change the colors for your website to match whatever you have as your logo. And then you can see, you can change the color of different things here, the different headings, uh, what, what color the links are gonna be. But I'm gonna go back over here. So here you can change the header and the footer and stuff like that, but to really change the header, you can't just click here and change the header, because if I click on menu here, um, it's not going to change the menu items. So if I want to change the menu items in the header, there's somewhere else I have to do. I have to go to do that. So let me click um, publish. So we publish with our new color and the logo here. And then I'm going to hit X to go out of this. We're gonna go back over here. Now if I go to appearance menus, this is where we can choose what things show up in the menu. We're not going to show services, so I'm going to uh, remove services. I'm going to remove news, and we're just going to have the products, the home, products, about us, and contact. So the real thing that a lot of you care about is the shop page. So let's just quickly show it how to edit the about us page and the contact page, and then we will go to the shop page. So I'm going to go back to visiting the site. And I'll, and if we go to About Us, now here on the About Us page, you can just edit it just like we added the other page. So I'm going to do Edit with Elementor. And I'm just going to delete this entire section here. I'm just going to hit the X bar here. And you can see there, this top section is, is really big. Uh, now, now that I deleted that little section, this this about us thing, there's a lot of space down here. So I'm going to go here to this edit section. And we'll go to style. Actually, we'll go to advanced. And you can see the padding. The padding is why there's so much blank space here. I'm just going to change this to zero. So zero, zero. And then we can have teams, you can change the, these pictures, you can change this text to your team names. You can just update and remove things, just like we did on the other page. Okay, let's go to the contact page. Oh, and before I forget, when you make changes, it doesn't actually make the changes until you click update. So I'm gonna click the update down here, and then we'll go to the contact page. So here's our contact form. Now you can edit with Elementor just like we've seen, but let me show you how you would actually edit what fields are in this form. I'm gonna go up to WP Forms right here, and I'm gonna go to Simple Contact Form, Edit Form. Now I can add things or remove things, like phone, we don't need to know the person's phone number. Okay, we do need wanna know the email address, and I can get something new, like I may wanna use some checkboxes. So I'm gonna click this checkbox and drag it over here. and then I can edit it. So, reason for contact, website, question, sales, want a cookie. Now I can save that, but before I go back to my contact page, I'm going to settings and notifications and make sure this is on. Sometimes it'll be off. You wanna make sure these notifications are on. And this is going to send to your admin email address. So I'm going to save this and we'll X this. Now I'll go back to my contact page and we'll try it out. And I do want a cookie. Hello. Now I'll click send message. Now I'll go to my email address. 
This is the info at robotattire.com, which is my current admin email. Go in here and here. Want a cookie? Hello, I got the email. Well, that works. Let's check out this header. There's still some menu items that I thought were removed. So let me go back over to the dashboard. Appearance, menus, and I did not save the menu last time. That was the problem. So let me move this, move that, and then we'll save the menu. And this time it will hopefully work. Okay, that looks good. Okay, we finally reached the part you've been waiting for, the product page. So let me show you how you can change the product page. Now you can see there is no edit with Elementor up here. Um, so we can only click customize. Now I'm gonna scroll down here to where it says WooCommerce. The product page is through WooCommerce. So here we can change things. Like, see how there's three columns here? Well, what if I can add additional columns of products. I can do two columns. And then we can change how many rows. Right now there are four rows. We may want to only have three rows. You can also uh, change if it's going, what type of the shop is going to look like. There's some just some minor differences between each of these styles and we can change how it's going to sort, what kind of sidebar we're going to have. So right now we have the the filter, we can we can filter so we can just show the products or we can turn back on the sidebar where we can filter by different but in different ways. So you can go through here and change things. I'm going to turn off this page title. So when you click pro products it's going to go right to the store page right here. And another thing we're going you can do from here is change what a single product page looks like. So let me go into this black t-shirt product page and we can change what this product page looks like. So here's some things we can, so see what the top rated products is on one side, we can click here to make it switch sides. Maybe we don't want that top rated products, we can turn that off by clicking the narrow width. I'm gonna go back to the, the right sidebar one and then see what sale badge. So see how it says sale up there? We can turn that off and turn it back on. We can choose whether it's going to show the star rating, the metadata. You can go to product gallery and I can change. See how it zooms when I go over it? Well, I can turn that off. So now when I scroll over, it's not going to zoom into the product. So you can play around with these settings until you get your product page looking exactly how you want to look, how you want it to look. Okay, and when you're editing a product page, let me show you how you would edit these, the sidebar here, and then also the reviews. Well, the reviews, I already actually showed you a while back how to turn on and off reviews. That's in the WooCommerce settings. So you can say, you can turn off reviews for everything or turn on reviews for everything. Right now they're turned on. Let me show you how you would update this sidebar right here. Uh, Cause I don't really like this black box right here. I do kind of like the related products, but I don't like this new cloth technologies box. So to do that, I'm going to have to go to the, the main WordPress dashboard. I'm gonna go to appearance and widgets. That sidebar is under widgets. So um, the specific widget is actually this WooCommerce uh, sidebar and we have the top rated project products that we saw in here and then we had this whole thing right here. So I'm just going to click this and then click delete. So now we're only going to have the top rated products. And see when I click into top rated products, you can choose what the title of this is gonna be, how many products to show, and stuff like that. And also, I'm gonna go up here and I'm also gonna delete this in the main sidebar. I'm gonna delete this black thing right here. And then you can add anything else you want to the sidebar. And then I'm gonna click update. Now we can go back over to that. Oh, really quick, I'll show you one more time how you would turn off the, the comments. If you go to WooCommerce settings here, and then you go to products, and then you can disable the, in the enable product reviews you can turn off. Okay, we'll just go 
back to here, visit site. Now if we go back to the product page, now we don't have that black thing right there. Another thing we can do is change what the shopping cart looks like. So I'm going to click the shopping cart right here. So we can go to the checkout page and they can click proceed to checkout here. And now we can we can change uh, what the checkout page looks like. Like for instance, I can turn on the coupon form. And now it, people can choose if they have a coupon. They can put, do click here to enter the code. And then we can check well, like what's going to be required here. And you can you can also choose what what's going to show up about your privacy policy. And this is a link to the privacy policy page, which we still have to edit. I'm actually going to open up this into a new tab really quick so I can, so we can show you how to edit the privacy policy. So to edit this privacy policy, I'm going to go back into the main WordPress menu. I'm going to go to pages. And then I'm going to find the privacy policy page. I'm going to edit this. And now we can edit the privacy policy. Uh, I'm just going to use all the suggested text. So I'm just going to delete where it says suggested text. And then I can click publish. Okay, now I want to make sure I'm using this right privacy policy in my, in my checkout page. Let's go back to the checkout page, and there's a few privacy. I'm going to choose this first privacy policy, and then we'll just click it to make sure it's the right one. Okay, that's the right one. And then make sure you click publish here. So any changes, you always want to click publish to make sure all the changes happen. The e-commerce site is starting to look pretty good. Now let's see how to add products to the store. So in order to add some custom products, we're going to go back to the main, the main dashboard. And I'm going to click where it says products here. Before we do this, see what it keeps saying, it keeps suggesting that we connect Monster Insights to set up website analytics. Now if we click here, it's going to go, it's going to actually walk us through all the steps. That's outside the scope of this particular tutorial. So I should have done this earlier, but what I'm going to do is, is, um, delete this plugin so we don't have to keep seeing it. We're going to go to plugins. So before we can delete a pro plugin, you have to deactivate it. So I'm going to deactivate this plugin and then I am going to uh, check it. And then I'm going to just click delete. And then if I refresh this page, oh, and to get, I guess there's one more thing we have to remove. Let's deactivate this. and then delete it. Now, it's no longer showing that message. Good. So let's go back to the products again. The first thing we're going to do is just remove all the products that are currently there. So I'm just going to click this, and then we are going to move to trash. And click apply. Okay. Now we can just start adding some products from scratch. So the first type of product I'm going to teach you how to create is a simple product. So this is a simple product. It has a picture. Sometimes there can be additional pictures below. We only have one picture for this one. It has a title, it has a description, and then down here it's going to have a more detailed description. So let me show you how you create a product like this. It's simple because there are no options that you would have to choose. So let's go back to the main dashboard. So I'm going to click add new to add a new product robot hat and then we can add the description so this description is the, is the description that appears second on the page that will just contain additional information about the product because the user will have already read a description and so this could be like made in usa you will not want to return this and then if we scroll down here to this other description. This is the description that the customer will see first, the short description. So 
I'm just going to paste in a description for the robot hat. Now I'm going to go back up here and make sure we have simple product chosen here. It's not virtual or downloadable, but we could make a downloadable product. And then we can put the full price, put $50, and then we can put the sales price. We can also schedule how long the sale is going to happen for. So I can say that it's going to start today and it's going to go for a week. So then after that time is up, it won't show that sales price anymore. So let's go to inventory. You can have a SKU number if you have a specific number for the product. And then there's also managed stock. So if you have managed stock, it will keep track of how much you have in stock. So I can say 10. And then if you have a stock on the product page, it will actually tell how many are left in stock. And then do you want to allow people to, to purchase it after it's not in stock and create a back order? And then you can also choose if you want it to be sold individually. And then you can put information about the shipping, like the weight, the dimensions, and then you can choose a shipping class, which we don't have any set up right now. Uh, also, you can choose linked products. Now, remember on the product page where there was some products on the side, there's products on the bottom? This is where you set those products. Now, I don't actually, uh, this is the first product I'm creating, so I don't have any to add. But once you add a bunch of products, you can select which things are going to be considered upsells and which things are going to be co considered cross-sells. So it will suggest the other products to users at various times. And then we have att attributes, which we will talk more later when we get to some of these other types of products. And then advance, a purchase note is a note that will be sent to the, the customer after they purchase it. Now menu order, this changes how far up on your page will show. So when you have a bunch of different products on your page, the lower this number, the higher it appears on the page. So the, the, the products you wanna to show to the user the most, you wanna have a lower number. And we have the reviews enabled for all the products, but you can turn off reviews for individual products here. And then we already talked about this description. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is add the product image. So I'll go up here, set a product image, and I'm going to upload a file. And here's my product image, this robot hat. And then if you have other images that won't be the main image, you can add them here, the product gallery images. Product tags, you wanna give similar items the same tag. Like I'll add hat for this. And then if we add any other hats, we'll use the same tag. And then people can click the word hat and they can see all the hats. And then we're also going to add this to the accessories category. No, another thing to just have all the accessories in the category, all t-shirts in the same category, and so on. Now I kind of skipped over this before, but this gives you information about SEO and you can change the different descriptions and titles and, and try to adjust the snippets that are gonna appear on, so, on search engines and other places on the web. But we're not gonna go into that right now. Right now, I'm just gonna go and click publish. And we've now created a simple product. Our product is created, so let's check it out. So it says we can click on view product right here and we'll open up the product page. So here's the hat here. We got the title we put in, it shows it's on sale. Here's the description and we have a 10 in stock. And then it shows our category and our tags here. If we click uh, accessory, we can see all the accessories. Currently there's no other accessories, uh, but we can go back to the product page. And then you can see here's the additional description here. And here's the reviews. I can even leave a review right now. Best hat ever. And then I click submit. And right now I'm logged in It'll show the account that I'm logged in at. So the, your users will be able to create their own account on the store, and then they will be able to, to leave reviews. So we have our simple product. Now we're going to create a variable product. A variable product is just a product where you can change the options. You can maybe change the color or change the size. Like, do you want a medium size, a large size, a small size, you want blue, red? So let me show you how to create a variable product. We could go back to the product page, but even right on this page, there's a, there's a new thing. We can click on new and then 
product. So we're creating a new product right now. And I'm gonna call this a robot shirt. We're going to have different colors and different sizes of shirts. So to create a variable product, we'll put in the description, um, made in your country. And we're gonna go down and we can just put the, the full description. Okay, we've got the description. So now we're gonna click, it says symbol product, we're gonna click this and go to variable product. So some of this is going to be the same, but now we ha we're gonna have attributes and variations. So let's go to the attributes and I'm going to add an attribute. The first is going to be size. And then it, sh it says right here, enter some text and it shows to use this to separate the attributes. This is not an I, it's actually a vertical bar. It's on your keyboard right on the same key as the backslash. So I'm gonna put small, medium, large. Okay, I'll save the attribute. And then I'm going to add another one, which is going to be color. And we'll do red and blue. And I'll save this. Okay, so now a, a customer will be able to choose the size and the color of the shirt. Okay, so now I'm going to save the attributes We'll go to variations and it says you need to add some variations on the attributes tab. That's because we need to go back to the attributes and there's one thing we forgot, which is to click this button that says, that says use for variations. And for color, let me put that down, use for variations. We'll just save that. Now we'll go back to variations. And at this point we can click at this drop down menu and create variations from all attributes. And then it'll say, are you sure you wanna do this? Yes, we wanna do that and it's added six variations. Okay, so it's added for every, it's added every size and every color. Now here is where it gets kind of tedious. We're going to have to add information for every single uh, variation. So we are going, so all these options are very similar to the, the simple product options, and we're going to have to add these for every variation. So for price, for the small, it's gonna be $20 in stock. You can add weights if you want. If we go up here and click this image, we can upload an image. Now I'm gonna upload a few files here. And I'm uploading a blue shirt, a picture of a blue shirt and a picture of a red shirt. And then I'll set this as the variation. So for the small red shirt, we're gonna show the, the red shirt here. And then we have to go through for all these other ones. So for the small blue shirt, I'm going to add the blue shirt here and it's going to be $20. And then we'll just keep going down here. And for the medium, it's going to be the same. I'm just gonna select the same image. This time, I'm going to put a different a different price. So this is gonna be $25. The medium will be $25. This is just, just to show an example that you can use um, different prices and even different sales prices for different uh, different variations. I'll make the sale price, so this red shirt is on sale, so I'll make this uh, 20. Let's say you have more of that type of shirt that you just need to get rid of. And then we'll just go through and set the rest of these. Okay, after we set all these variations, I'm going to save changes. And now we can add everything that you add to the simple product. Like you, we can add tags, I'm gonna put shirt. And then I can also go to a category, select t-shirts for the category. And then you're still gonna to wanna to select a product image. When a product is initially shown on the store page before the customer can choose what type of color they're looking at, it's gonna to have to show just a single image. So this is the, just gonna be the initial image that's gonna be shown. We'll show the, the blue. And that reminded me of one more thing. Let's go back over to uh, the variations. Um, you can also set a default size and a default color to be selected. So we're gonna put a default size to medium and a default color to blue, just like it's showing the blue image. Okay, now we can go up here and we can publish. Now let's view the product to see what this looks like. Okay, see it's showing it could be anywhere between 20 and $30, depending on 
which size and which color. And you can see here's the blue one. But if I go to a large, it's gonna it's gonna change the price to 30. And if I change the color, I can change it to red. And it should show the red shirt. And just like before, uh, well, just like just like before, we'll have. Um, reviews. There's even additional information. It's going to show the different sizes possible and the different colors possible. And you can see it automatically is putting related products up here. Uh, so really I don't have, there's not really very many products, so it's just going to show the products that we already have. Now we're going to create a grouped product. A group product is a product where there's a few different options and each options come with different items. Um, like say you're selling a camera and you'll have a product page for the camera, but you can se select just the camera or you can select the camera in the bag or you can select the camera bag and tripod and each group of pro each group of items under the product page would have different prices. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to go to new product. So to make a group product, we have to make the main product, and then we have to create all the sub-products that are within the group. So since this is a robot attire store, what if we actually sold an actual robot or a robot toy? So I'm going to put robot toy for the main product, and then we can just add the descriptions. Okay, after we add the descriptions, we can change the product to grouped product. And then we can add uh, categories. So I actually already added a new cate category called robot. And then you can add tags like toy, fun, and then I'll just add those. And then we will add an image. So I've already uploaded this robot picture. So I'll set that as the, pro the product image. And then I will publish it. Okay, now we have to create the sub products. So I'll click add new and then I'll put Cosmo robot because the robot toy is gonna to be a Cosmo robot. We already have the description so we don't need to add the description. All we have to do is add the price which we'll set as $100. And then what we wanna do is make sure it's invisible. So right now, this will just show up on the normal store page, but we want to click the edit for the catalog visibility and we'll have it hidden. So it'll only show up as the grouped product. So I'll publish this. And now I'll create two more. So let me just copy this and I'll do add new. Um, so this is gonna be a ro Cosmo Robot plus case. And then this is just going to be $150. And then we will put the visibility to hidden. And then I'll just do one final product, which will be Cosmo Robot plus case plus extra charger. Then this will be $200. And then I will again change the visibility and publish. Now that we have all these sub products created, let's go back to our main product page and I will select the robot toy, the initial one, and click edit. Now we'll go down and go to linked products and here's where we add all the linked products. So we have Cosmo Robot, we have Cosmo Robot plus case, and we have Cosmo Robot plus case plus extra charger. Then I'll just update this product. And now we can view product to see what it looks like. Okay, so we have, it says robot toy, and we can choose Cosmo Robot, Cosmo Robot plus case, or Cosmo Robot plus case plus extra charger. And you can see it has the price range of all these prices. And everything else is basically the same as the other types of products. Okay, we're going to learn about one final type of product, which is a downloadable product. So I'm going to go to New and click on Product. So a downloadable product could be an ebook, it could be an image, it could be a zip file full of a bunch of different files, and it could be a song maybe. Um, so we are going to actually be selling a song, a robot song. And... Uh, and we just add the descriptions just like all the other products. Okay, now 
we can change from, it's gonna be a simple product, but we're gonna click virtual and downloadable. So virtual means that it's not going to be shipped to anybody, and downloadable means we can uh, choose what the file is to download. So this is going to be a $3 song, and then I can add the file that's gonna be downloaded. So I'm gonna to go to choose file, and then I'll upload the file, and then I got have this robotsong.mp3. And I don't know why I added all these extra characters at the end, because that wasn't on my computer, but no problem. So now it actually puts the URL right in here. And then for the file name, I'm going to put robotsong.mp3. And then you can choose how many times a person can download it. It's default to unlimited, but maybe you only want someone to be able to download it three times. And then how long will the download link work? So right now, it will work forever. But we can make the download link expire after a certain number of days. Let's give them one week to download the song. Okay, we'll go up here and just add... I'm going to add, make this an accessory. We could make a new category called songs. And then for uh, tags, we'll just put song. And then, oh yeah, also we're going to need a picture. So I'm going to set the product image. Instead of uploading a new image, I'm just going to pick one that's already in here. So this looks like... So how about this one? See, this person's actually listening to something, so we'll set that as the product image because they're, they're listening to the song right in there. So now I'm going to publish this. And we'll go to View Product. Okay, so if you add this to car and actually go to the checkout, it will end up giving you a link to download the song. Our store is products. Now it's time to make it so a customer can actually check out by configuring payment processing, taxes, shipping, coupons, and more. Okay, now we're going to add payments. We're going to make it so your store can accept credit cards. And to do that, we're going to add a new plugin. So let's go to the plugins here. The way we're going to make it so customers can pay with a credit card is through Stripe. And to do that, we're going to add a new plugin. So I'll click Add New. And now I'm going to search for Stripe. And then we have the WooCommerce Stripe Payment Gateway. So I'll just install that. Okay, then I'll activate. Now let's create or log into our Stripe account. Okay, I'm here at stripe.com and I'm going to click sign in and you click that whether you have an account yet or not. And then I'm going to, you can either sign with your account or you can sign up. If this is your first time creating an account, you're going to have to verify a link in your email. The great thing about Stripe is it's completely free to use. Now I'll go to Payments. And these are all the different things you can set up as payments. And I'm going to turn Stripe on. And then we can connect or create a Stripe account to accept payments. So I'm going to click here, connect or create or connect account. We already created the account. And then I'm just going to go through this. They just want to verify my phone number. So I'll enter my phone number here. And now we'll connect the account. And now we'll just put in information about the business, like address and other things. And then you can even put your bank account information so you can get your payout from Stripe. Okay, we got done. I got done putting in all the really personal information to get this Stripe uh, account set up and connected. Now we're going to update what shows up on your store website when someone's paying by Stripe. Instead of credit card Stripe, let's just call it credit card. Uh, people don't necessarily have to know that it's using Stripe. And luckily, the, the keys from the Stripe account automatically got uh, switched over here. Okay, now we have to we have a few things disabled that we have to fix. So it says that the payments payouts is disabled until missing business information is, is updated. So I'm gonna go here, edit account keys, and we have to add this URL to the Stripe account settings. So I'll copy that. Add endpoint and add the endpoint. We're just going to listen for all endpoints. I'll click Add Events. 
and then add endpoint. And now we just have to copy this web hook, hook secret and go back to WooCommerce and I'm just going to paste it in right here. And then save live keys. Okay, we can now accept payments. Uh, we can accept payments. We can't do payouts yet uh, until we put in a little information, a little more information on the Stripe page. Um, but we can receive the payments and then once we update more information about like our bank account and stuff like that, then we can accept the payouts. So on Stripe, if you want to test it out, you can enable test mode here. And then when you're done testing it, make sure you turn test mode off. And uh, Stripe gives you some test card numbers. So if I click here, it's going to open up these test card numbers that you can use. So when you're testing your website, you can use these test numbers. They're not real numbers, but Stripe, you can use this to test uh, an order with Stripe. Okay, let's go back over here. We're going to set up one more method of payment. So I'm going to click payment here. And now I'm going to set up payment with PayPal. So you can set up any of these types of payments. And if it, no matter which one you pick, it's going to walk you through that. But for this tutorial, I'm just showing Stripe and PayPal. So I'm going to install another plugin. So I'm going to click on plugins here. And then I'm just going to search for, uh, or actually I'm going to hit, click add new. And then I'm going to search for PayPal. Okay, WooCommerce PayPal payments. Install now and activate. Okay, now I can just go to WooCommerce uh, settings and then payments. And then I can come down to where it says PayPal. Turn that on. And then I'm going to connect to PayPal. Just like with Stripe, you're going to have to create a PayPal account, or maybe you already have one. I'm just going to sign into my PayPal account that I already have. And you'll have to make sure it's a PayPal business account, so I'm going to create a new business account. You're going to have to set up a PayPal business account, but after you do all that, you can go back to WordPress. And then we're going to enable the PayPal gateway. So you can kind of change what it's going to look like. But most of this you can kind of just keep the default settings. The only thing you may want to do is decide whether you're going to use sandbox mode to test it or you want to actually turn it on for real. So we'll leave sandbox mode off so we'll have it turned on for real. And then I'll just save changes. Okay, now we have two forms of payment set up. Stripe for credit cards, and then we also have PayPal. We're going to test it all out in a moment. But first, let's set up the tax. So to get taxes to work, we have this tax tab here. But to make it even easier, we're going to, we're going to install another plugin. So I'm going to go down to plugins again. And this time I'm just going to go directly to add new plugin. And I'm going to search for tax. And then we're going to look for WooCommerce shipping and tax. So this is going to make it much easier to set up both the shipping and tax. That's the great thing about WordPress is that there's plugins for basically anything to help make different things easier. Okay, now I'm going to activate it. And now it's going to say, it's going to tell me to install Jetpack and Connect. So to make this easy tax system work, you're going to have to install Jetpack, another thing, and also create a Jetpack account. But it's going to make things way easier to set, than to set up taxes manually for every state. Hmm, installation failed, destination folder already exists. This could mean that it tried to install and something messed up in the installation, and then when it tried to install again, the folder was already there. So to actually to remove the, the folder, we're actually going to go back to Hostinger, and we're going to have to go to our hosting account for Robot Attire. So let me go to Manage. And now I'm going to have to go to where we can actually to access the actual files that make up WordPress and be able to find that folder and delete. So let me scroll down a little bit here. 
And I'm going to go to File Manager. Now you have to be very careful when you're in the file manager because if you've messed some up something here, it can mess up a lot of things on your website. But I'm gonna open this. Okay, now I have to find WP content. Now plugins. And now I'm gonna find Jetpack. And I'm just going to delete this jetpack folder by clicking the delete button up here. Okay, now that jetpack is deleted, we can go back to our hosting our page. And I'm just going to refresh this so we can try installing jetpack again. So I'm gonna click install now. Okay, it's installed, I can just activate this now. Now I have to set it up. So set up Jetpack. Like I said, I'm going to have to create an account. I'm just going to create an account with my Google login. And we can choose any of these paid plans, but if we scroll down a little bit, we can just do Jetpack free. So we're just going to use the free version. And then you just set the choose some things here and then make sure to not choose anything that costs money. I'm just going to click dot, uh, not now for all these things. Okay, this is set up. We don't actually have to get this, this plan here. So I'm going to go back to WooCommerce and back to settings. Now to tax. Okay, now we have the option to enable automated taxes. This is going to make everything work way easier. If you don't have automated taxes, you have to set up the taxes individually for each state and each place that you're shipping to or shipping from, but automated taxes will just figure that out all on, on its own. It will be, see it says your tax rate and tax will be automatically configured for Michigan and the United States. That's where I live. If you live somewhere else, it will just enable, it will just automatically figure out the taxes from where you're shipping from. And we're, we're enabling prices exclusive of tax, so the tax will be added extra. And then we're going to calculate tax based on customer shipping address. Most of this you're just going to use exactly how it's set. So I'm just going to click Save Changes. Okay, now we can do something similar with shipping. I'm going to go to Shipping. So we're going to create some shipping zones. It says right here, shipping zone is a geographic region where a certain set of shipping methods and rates apply. And we're going to add a shipping zone. And then you're going to choose where the zone. So let's make a, zipping, a shipping zone called United States. And then I'll, and I'm going to ship, and then I'm going to choose United States. So for the entire United States, we're going to add certain shipping methods. So the first one, so we have a few options. We have the flat rate, free shipping, or local pickup. So I'm going to click uh, add shipping method for a flat rate. Now I can edit this. So um, some places, um, depending on where you're located, uh, sometimes uh, shipping will be taxable. In a lot of places it's not, so I'm going to click none, but you'll, you're going to have to look at your area wherever you're based off of, out of to see if you should tax the shipping or not. So I'm going to put a flat rate of just, how about $6? And I'll save the changes. Now we can add another shipping method. So let's say we want free shipping, but we only want free shipping if someone spends enough money. So I'm going to go to edit and free shipping requires, what does it require? Well, uh, maybe a shipping coupon. We'll talk about coupons in a little bit here. Or maybe a minimum order amount. You can see there's different options. I'm going to do a minimum order amount. So I'm going to make someone spend at least $30 to get free shipping. When do coupons apply? Are we going to apply minimum order rule before the coupon discount or after the coupon discount? Um, we'll just do after the coupon discount and then click Save Changes. So now people have the option of the flat rate or the free shipping. So we added this shipping zone. We're also going to add another shipping zone. So I'm going to click shipping zone here. And then we have United States, but let's say we want to ship to another country, like 
maybe we want to ship to Canada. So the shipping is going to cost a little more since I'm based in the United States. And I'll do all of Canada. And here, we're going to do flat rate. And it's going to be, this time, $10. It's a little more because we have to ship it a little further. And then I can go back to shipping zone. And then you can see, you can also do local pickup if you want to add your specific city or state. And then you can choose local pickup. Okay, let's look at some of these options here. So you can choose whether you want to hide the shipping cost until an address is entered, or uh, just depending on what you want to look like to the customer. Now, shipping classes allows you to create different shipping costs for different types of products. So maybe some products you'll be charging $5 for shipping. Some products you'll be charging $10 for shipping. I'm not going to show you this in this tutorial, but you can add different shipping classes and then set your products to, to go with that shipping class. And then that product will will be charged that shipping rate. But let's go to this next tab here, WooCommerce Shipping. And this is because we have the plugin installed. We have the WooCommerce Shipping plugin, and it allows us to automatically print shipping labels and save a trip to the post office. So you can choose some settings like where, how you're gonna print the labels, and then if you want to be able to purchase shipping labels right through here. And so I'm just gonna leave this all as it is. Okay, now we're gonna learn about creating coupon codes. It's actually pretty simple. So on the WooCommerce area here, and I'm gonna click on coupons. It's telling us actually on this new version, the coupon management has moved. So let's remove the legacy coupon menu. So we'll just be using the new coupon menu, which is now in marketing coupons. And I'll just click, we can either click on create your first coupon or just add coupon. I'll click on add coupon because this is the method that you're going to be using the most. And then we can just create the coupon code. And I'm going to create the code ro robots are amazing. This description is really just for you. And I'll put robot coupon. And then there's a few different types of coupons you can make. You can make a percentage discount, so everything's going to be 10% off. A fixed cart discount, so you get $5 off your order. Or a fixed product discount, which is a discount that only applies to one specific product. So what I'm going to do is create a percentage discount. So we can put 10%. And then you can choose whether you want to always allow free shipping or maybe maybe you don't. So the coupon can include free shipping or it cannot. And then you can choose when it expires. So let's say it expires here a week later. And then we can go over to uh, usage restrictions. So how much do they have to spend to be able to use the coupon? So let's say they have to spend $20 to use the coupon. And what's the maximum number? Uh, you may have no maximum, but maybe you don't want them to be able to use a coupon on an order that's over $500. And then you can choose whether the coupon can be used with other coupons or not, whether it should exclude sale items. And then here is where you would choose if a coupon applied only to a specific product or if a product would be excluded from a coupon. You know, there's some things that never go on sale. Like, have you ever seen a Nintendo Switch on sale? Well, they would have that ex excluded. And then you can apply the coupon only to specific categories, exclude categories. And then if you only want certain email addresses to be able to use it, so only certain people can use the coupon, you can put it here. And then we have the usage limit. So how many times can this coupon be used? Well, after 500 times, the coupon can no longer be used anymore. Um, so um, how many... Here is how many items you can use it for. So how many, how full your cart can be. And then how many times can each user use the coupon? We'll just put one time. That makes sense. Each user can only use the coupon one time. Obviously, someone could just create a new account and use it again. But that limits it somewhat. And I'm going to publish this coupon. Okay. At this point, we're going to test all this. I'm going to go to the store and purchase something and use this coupon. So let me go to the store, visit store, or visit site or visit store, go to products, and actually I already have two things in my cart from before. Oh, 
an item which is no longer available is removed from your cart. Well, I'll remove this too so I can do the whole thing from the beginning. So let me go to the shop. And I am going to get a hat. So I just add, I just could click add cart. And then here you can't add to the cart because you just select the options first. So I'm going to get a small shirt that's the color red. And I will add this to cart. And so we have this options here where you can pay without even going to the cart. Actually, let's turn that off because uh, we want someone to actually have to go to the cart before they pay. Okay, I'm on WooCommerce settings. I'm on payments. And I'm going to go down to where it says uh, PayPal. I'm going to manage that. And then I'm going to scroll down where it says single product page. And then I'm going to disable enable on single product. So now it's not going to show up on the product page. We'll still show up on the cart though. And then I'm going to save changes. And one more thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the payments tab. And then I'm going to go to the, the Stripe payment settings. And we are going to disable this express checkout. Uh, so it's not going to... Um, show these express checkout buttons. Okay, now let's go back to our product page. Okay, and I'll just refresh the cart page and you can see those buttons are gone. So I'll add a medium, how about a small red shirt, add to cart. Okay, now I'm gonna view the cart. Okay, these two carts, I thought I added a hat. Uh, let me go back and add a hat really quick. And add to cart. Okay, now I'll view the cart. Okay, so now I have two shirts and a hat. Now I'm going to apply, apply a coupon. So robots are amazing. Apply the coupon. Okay, now you can see that we've got a $9 discount. And I can choose between flat rate or free shipping. Because remember, we set free shipping as long as the, the amount is over $50. It's showing that it's shipping to Michigan. And then I'll proceed to checkout. Okay, now I can put in some of my uh, information here. Then I'm going to put in a demo credit card number from Stripe. And then here, I don't think the numbers here matter when I'm using the demo. Oh, yeah, I had to be in, de in test mode to test the cart. So let me go back over to this menu. I'm going to quickly go to manage Stripe. And then enable test mode. Okay, let me save that. And then I have to, when I'm in test mode, you have to have special test keys. So I'll go to edit account keys. Oh, see, there's the live keys and there's the test keys. So let me get the publish little key. And then the test secret key. And then the test secret webhook. So we're setting this up just like before. And I'm going to add the endpoint. And then I just need to copy this ID, uh, put it in here, and save test keys. OK, I'm going to refresh the page, uh, put in the billing information, and then I'll put in this test credit card information, and then place order. And thank you, your order has been received. Now let's go look at our administrator email account. So here's the administrator email account. So we get an email when we receive an order and it's showing new order. You've received an order from Bo Carnes and it has all the information. It has the shipping address. Now let's go to our administrator dashboard. Now if we go to orders here, we can see the order. It says order from Bo Carnes is processing. So three items are ready to be fulfilled. I could create the shipping label, send the product, and go from processing to completed. And then I'm going to update that. And then in this customers tab, we can now see the customer. There's a new customer. And then we can go to the reports tab, uh, showing how much we've how much money we've made. And then the orders tab, we still have that order in there. Finally, we are going to talk about the emails that get sent to the customers. So I'm going to go to settings, 
and then emails. So here you can check the emails that get sent for various reasons. So we already have e the emails go to the administrator email for new order, canceled order, failed order. But then an email would get sent to customers for all these other things, such as a completed order, processing order. And if you click on manage, you can choose what the email is going to look like. You can enable or disable the email notification. You can change the subject, email heading, additional content. So you can choose what email the, you, the customer is gonna get. And one thing to notice, if I go back to the email tab here, it has this message here. So in case if you get this all set up and the email does not arrive to the customer, you're going to have to look at this here. To ensure your store's notifications arrive in your and your customer's inboxes, we recommend connecting your email address to your domain and setting up a dedicated SMTP server. If something doesn't seem to be sitting correctly, install the WP Mail Logging plugin. So uh, it could just work out of the box. But if it doesn't, I would recommend installing this plugin. And it's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to show in this tutorial, but I'll just take you step by step into getting it working. And then that will make it more likely that your email will get to your customer. Okay, we're almost done. There's one more loose end I wanted to cover, which is this top bar here where it has, don't miss our holiday offer, 20% off. Well, we probably don't want that because it may not be a holiday. So I'm going to go to customize. And then I'm going to go to header. And here's the top row. So if you remember, there was the social icons on the right side, and then we have the message on this side. So I'm going to click here. And now here we can change what message is in this top row here. So maybe instead of the, the holiday, instead of talking about the holiday offer, we can say, check out our new hats. And then you can actually um, make this a link and you can link it to your hat page. So I'm just gonna, whoops, uh, yeah, publish this. Another thing I could do is just remove this completely. So if I just hit X on the socials and X on top row or X on this HTML thing and I publish it, now if I go to my website, I'll just X out of this, now we don't even have that row at the top. So you may just not even want that top bar. The store is complete. You now know how to set up a fully functioning e-commerce website. There are a ton of settings and plugins that we didn't even get to, so feel free to just explore the different options and see how you can customize your store even more. Good luck with selling your products.